Hi everyone, I'm Solomon from the Coding Coders team. So far, we've seen how to create a Kotlin multi-platform mobile library, how to access iOS Swift APIs in it, and how to push it to Maven Central. We haven't discussed how to access Android APIs. Kotlin is the main Android programming language, so how difficult can it be, right? Well, it turns out that the Android platform is not as simple as the JVM. So there are multiple strategies you can use to access Android APIs in your KMM libraries. Let's discuss them. First and foremost, you need to make sure that you actually need an Android API and not a JVM API. You should not have your library target Android if the API you want to access is actually provided by the JVM. Most of the file access, date time, cryptography, and many more APIs are JVM APIs. And even if your library is supposed to be used, especially on mobile targets, it is way simpler to target the JVM rather than adding the entire Android toolchain to your build. Okay, so you're positive, you need Android APIs, right? The way I see it, there are two ways you can add the Android APIs to the class path of your library. There's the official way, which enables all Android capabilities to your library. There's also the lighter way, a hack really, which is more restrictive, but a lot simpler, and which we will discuss at the end of this video. The official way consists in adding the Android Gradle plugin to your build, as well as its corresponding Kotlin, Target, and Android configuration. Adding the com.android.library plugins and defining an Android target rather than a regular JVM target has a notable effect. What will be published is an AAR for Android Archive rather than a JAR or JAR for JVM Archive. This means that the library can package Android resources such as images, XMLs or JNI libraries. As you can see, most of the Android configuration is not happening in the Kotlin block, but in the Android block. This is because the Kotlin multi-platform plugin communicates with the Android plugin and directly uses the regular Android configuration. Note the published library variants that is needed in the Android configuration. That is, this is needed for your Android library artifact to be published. Also, you need to configure the Android plugin to read the manifest in the Android, ma Android main source set rather than the regular main source set where the Android plugin actually expects it. Since we're talking about the Android manifest, your Android library must, of course, declare one. It should be located in src android main android manifest.xml. Here, for example, I am declaring that my library will access the internet, and therefore I need to declare that the library will use the corresponding permission. As with any regular Android library, when a KMM project will depend on this library, it will merge its manifest with the application manifest and automatically add the permission declaration to its own. And that's it. You can now access Android APIs in the Android main source set. As we've seen in our previous video, it is easy to abstract a platform specific feature. Let's say we want an API that gets us a various path. This is a very simple expression of that API. We expect an object that provides two functions to get us path to different directories. The actual iOS implementation of that API is pretty straightforward. This is a simple Kotlin translation of the Objective-C API used to access this very information. Nothing new there that we haven't seen already, so let's move on. Things become a little bit more complex once we implement this API for Android. Okay, so you may think that this is even simpler, but looks are deceiving here. Co this code does not compile. The problem is that we need an Android context to access that information. 
This may look simple, but it is to me the biggest hurdle we need to overcome when creating KMM APIs for libraries targeting both Android and iOS. The notion of context object does not exist in iOS, so we need to find a way to handle this Android problem in a multi-platform way. As usual, there are multiple solutions we can use to solve this problem. The simplest solution is to ask that the context be passed to the object at application creation and store it statically. Note that we are making sure that we are storing the application context and not a context, so this ensures no memory leaks. This is, of course, the simplest solution, but it has the, the hurdle of only working if you are not accessing resources or if you are accessing only resources that are not dependent on activity configuration, resources such as theme, orientation, etc. This also means that any application using this library will need to call set context in their application on create. Another solution that's a bit more complex is to declare path as an expect class rather than an expect object. Note that we are not expecting a constructor. Contrary to a regular class, if an expect class expects a constructor, then we need to explicitly define it. Here, we did not define a constructor, so that means that each actual implementation may have their own specific constructor. It also means that it will not be possible to construct a path object in the shared multi-platform code. It will have to be done in the platform-specific code. Therefore, any shared API that needs to access a path provided by the path object will have to take a path parameter. We could go a step further and abstract the context itself. That this time we are expecting a constructor that all actual implementation must provide. The actual Android implementation of this object would be quite simple. Here, we can see a very nice trick. Instead of declaring actual classes, you can declare actual type aliases using existing classes as long as the alias class conforms to what's expected. This is why we had to expect an abstract context class, because the Android context class is abstract. If we wanted to, to use a type alias, then we need to expect an abstract class as well. The actual implementation in iOS therefore needs to define an abstract context class as well. Because context is an abstract class, we need a way for the iOS application to create one, hence the iOS context class. This context will anyway be ignored since there is really no notion of context in iOS. With this, you still need to pass a parameter that only exists in the target platform, but that context parameter can be used for all APIs that need a context for their Android implementation, not just our path API. The last solution, there's so many testy options, right? So the last solution is to use dependency injection. My friend Romain has told you in an earlier video how to use Codein DI, our very own dependency injection container. What you can do is have the Android context be bound in the container when you create the application. Now you can have the path class request a DI object too, and easily implement it for Android and for iOS. So, you may ask, what's the difference between this and the very first solution where we used a static variable? After all, it feels the exact same idea, having the context be set at application startup. So, the difference is that we do not store it statically. We access it through a DI container that can have, for example, contextual or hierarchical overloads. You will access the activity context if there is one and fall back to the application one if there's not. Romain will walk you through this advanced usage of Codein DI in a later video. What if you need to target both Android and the JVM? Turns out the Kotlin multi-platform plugin does not support commonization of JVM and Android code. In the official Kotlin roadmap, the item 
sharing code between JVM and Android is sadly postponed for later. This does not mean that you can't target both Android and JVM in your library, just that IntelliJ IDEA won't recognize shared JVM and Android code as JVM code. Any JVM API will therefore not autocomplete in the IDE. However, while the IDE will report error, the code will compile fine. This is obviously suboptimal, and we need a better solution than programming with all our IDE power turned off. If you do need full Android capabilities, then you can use this workaround. When apply development trick is set to true, then we do not configure an intermediate source set. Instead, we add the directory as a source directory for JVM. Obviously, that means that the Android target is completely broken while this flag is set, but at least the idea is tricked to work as expected. If you do not need the full power of Android, then you can use reflection to discriminate between Android and classic JVM at runtime. You have to manually add the Android jar to the class path, but set it to compile only so that it is not declared as a real dependency of your library. Let me show you an example. Codeinlog is a multi-platform library for logging. It forwards log to, depending on the platform and what's available, Android log or iOS OS log or JS console log or JVM SLF4J or in the end, good old println. Instead of declaring both the JVM and the Android platform, we made the choice to target only the JVM and detect Android at runtime through reflection. First, we added the Android SDK jar as compiled only JVM dependency. This provides the Android SDK to the class path at, comp at compile time, but not necessarily at runtime, so that regular JVMs won't need it. Then we can easily detect at runtime if the Android SDK is in the class path. As you can see, we, de we detect both SLF4J and Android availability from reflection and have code in log behave accordingly. By the way, we don't have to depend on the entire Android SDK. You can shrink the jar to have it contain only the API that you are interested into. This makes a very small Android jar that you can distribute with your sources. In Codein Log, we stripped everything except the nullability annotation and the log class, because that's really all we needed. There you have it. Multiple ways to, ha to add the Android target to your library. Multiple ways to handle the Android context. Everything you need to start contributing to the Kotlin multi-platform ecosystem for iOS and Android. I hope you learned something today. If you did, please consider subscribing to the channel, liking the video, and maybe even sharing it to your programmer friends. If you have any questions, you can contact me on the Kotlin Slack, via email, or via Twitter. Until then, I'll see you around.